should I just go with Derrick Henry or Christian McCaffrey and just, you know, try and try and score one of those guys staying healthy throughout the year? Or should I take the chance on Justin Jefferson? everybody i'm tyler from aspire sports and today i have mike you guys probably know him over on tiktok is it just a what is your at over on tiktok my at is nfl mike and it's kind of confusing mike. okay kind of confusing because it's mike on the mic sports on instagram nfl mike on tiktok the reason for that is because nfl mike won't give me the damn handle but I'm it, coming. yeah I'm somebody coming. i'm coming for it. it it's always it's frustrating when that happens with uh because the youtube is aspire sports but then over on twitter I didn't have it Aspire Sports underscore because somebody added the Aspire Sports and they don't even use it. And it's so frustrating. So, but I appreciate you coming on, man. It means a lot. Um, So I I do have a question though. Are you from the LA area? Is that why you're a Chargers fan? I am, yes. Just outside LA. Uh, People are familiar with LA, closer to Pasadena and the San Gabriel Valley. So I'm I'm from the same area that my team plays in now. Yes, (laughs) yes, now. And how did you get started on TikTok? Uh, was it just one day you decided to start posting? Were you actively looking at TikTok and were like, man, I need to just make content? What made you do it? It's actually a pretty crazy story. Uh, I was stationed overseas from 2017 until 2020. Um, and I had just come home. I finally just finished my contract and I got out of the military honorably. And when I got home, for one, we were in a pandemic. So Mm -hmm. people weren't talking in the first place. All my old friends were off doing their own thing. Um, And for two, people weren't really talking about sports because we were in a pandemic. So sports was shutting down. So I needed to try and find some more people to talk sports with because all my military friends were gone. All my local friends were dealing with the pandemic or gone. So I started on Instagram, actually, with just like a little small sports podcast. My cousin and TikTok was starting to blow up at the same time. So I started making content on there and a few videos went viral. I got addicted. (laughs) <laughs> no that's great you got over 100 you're close to 110,000 now right yeah we're like closing this. in on 110 closing in on 110 well congratulations very, very dude thank that's you awesome. thank you all right so let's go ahead and jump into the video we're going to be talking about chargers since you're a big chargers fan they got a lot of good fantasy players as well so uh real quick what do you think their overall record is going to be i see that you do those tiktok videos where you're predicting the record so what do you think the chargers record is going to be this upcoming I got the Bolts winning 13 games. I'm a little biased about it. I think that the path to winning 13 for the Chargers goes through sweeping one of the division opponents. They got to find a way to sweep either the Raiders, Broncos, or Chiefs. I had them doing it to the Chiefs because they're kind of built mismatch-wise to try and beat the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Um, But if they don't sweep and we split with everybody, then 12 wins. So anywhere from 11 to 13 wins. Yeah, uh, I think think they have the best overall team in the – I would say. So I do think they can definitely win that division. I think they're just a really solid team. They beat up the defense this off season. Obviously you got a budding star and Justin Herbert, the offensive weapon. So they look good. All right. So I had max on max fantasy football. AZ. Um, he said that Austin Eckler would be his second overall pick in fantasy football. Uh, Have you done any fantasy drafts, maybe over an underdog? Would he be your second overall pick right now in fantasy football? Yeah, I've been doing some mock drafts, just slowly getting into things. Really just kind of easing in, though. (laughs) No research, just casually doing it. But Eckler's my number two also. Um, I've decided this year that I might explore some wide receiver heavy strategies based Mm -hmm. off of some of the mid-tier running backs not quite having my exact boat of confidence. But as far as the first couple picks of the draft, it's Jonathan Taylor and Austin Eckler to me. Yeah. No, I agree. I think this year, because when I look at it, the second overall pick is just, uh, I don't, I love Eckler. I do think he's a stud. Uh, and I think that he can be there. I just don't know if I would want to draft him as my, second overall. So I'm, I probably would go, me personally, like maybe Cooper Cup, but this would be like the first time ever where I would do something like that. So I'm kind of in the same boat where I might try the wide receiver, uh, but we'll have to see. But I do think Austin Eckler obviously makes a really good case there for number two. Christian uh, Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry would be other guys, but he definitely, after last season, how this yeah. offense works, receiving ability for him, he's a stud. Yeah, the, uh, two, spot, the two spot's tough, but the three yes. spot that is the toughest spot in, the, <laughs> in fantasy this year, I think. Because you have to decide, 
between like, go ahead. Should I just go with Derek Henry or Christian McCaffrey and just, you know, try and try and score one of those guys staying healthy throughout the year? Or should I take the chance on Justin Jefferson going nuts like Cooper Cup did last year? Or should I just get Cooper Cup? Right. Like, you don't know what to do at three at this point. No, I agree. I don't. I've I've said it for a while now. I want a later pick. It's either the first overall pick or give me like the eighth, ninth pick. Yeah. Because I think that there's a lot of good range or good guys in that range too that I can get. So I agree. I don't really want a top five pick other than the first overall pick. So yeah. we can agree there. Um, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, we got Justin Herbert, a budding star in the league, going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league for a long time. Uh, this upcoming season for fantasy football, is he a top three? option for you at the quarterback position i think so when you when you look at what he can do as far as on the ground paired with through the air he threw for five thousand yards last year he barely squeaked past that mark so you can go ahead and hold it being a 17 game season against him but i think he's one in eight quarterbacks to ever do that drew Brees did it a bunch of times and i think it's going to get replicated it, the the offense is being ran by joe lombardi longtime qb coach and then offensive coordinator in new orleans and they're just a five thousand yard season factory over there and i think herbert you can safely say he's going to throw for five thousand yards again and he's going to run anywhere in between three and 500 just depends on if he has another game like he had in pittsburgh that one game that kind of propped up his rushing stats even a lot more putting mm -hmm. him up to almost 55 total people don't realize that right. he almost hit 5500 all purpose last year uh and the touchdowns are going to be i don't know man i mean 50 is possible yeah. it, 50 it's combined because yeah. he had what, 42 or 43 last year, and we had no defense. So the defense was getting ran all over. They're holding him off the field, keeping him at, from getting the ball. Now he's probably going to get, you know, 10, 15 more opportunities this season to score touchdowns. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And, they, and the thing with them as well is they play at a fast pace. So they're, you know, fast-paced, high-flying offense that I wouldn't be shocked if he threw for, you know, 50 passing touchdowns. I, I definitely yeah. think that's something that's well within the realm of possibilities for Justin Herbert this upcoming season. They have a solid receiving core. Um, so let's let's talk about some of these receivers on the team right now. We got Keenan Allen. Obviously, everybody knows him. Big stud, slot receiver. Yeah. Mike Williams had the finally like big breakout season last year. Do you expect another big breakout season once again from Mike Williams? Not necessarily breakout, but a big season this upcoming season uh, for Mike Williams. Uh, yeah, I think Mike's going to have a similar year that he had last year. Personally, as a Chargers fan, I stay away from our receivers over the last couple of years. It's a little tough to call from game to game which one's going to do the work because they both provide very different skill sets. Keenan Allen's kind of more your short yardage, consistent hands, high volume. If we're playing against a team that we feel like we're going to need to march down the field against because they have a good secondary, Keenan Allen's going to be the guy that we lean on. But then on the, on the vice versa, Keenan Allen doesn't get the big plays. Keenan Allen doesn't get the red zone work that Mike Williams gets. Mike Williams, if we have three downs to score, Mike Williams will be getting one jump ball out of those three downs every single time that we're on the goal line. Right. Uh, Mike Williams also gets all the big plays designed his way. They try and throw the play action to, to Austin Eckler to free up Mike Williams down the field in one-on-one -on -one situations with DBs where you can just go over the top of them and catch it or outrun them uh, on the deep crossers. So the way that their skill sets are so different, the Chargers from week to week kind of just like pivot from one to the other. They've been doing this since Philip Rivers, too. It's not just last year, but a lot last year, where one week Keenan Allen will have 865 and a touchdown, and then the next week Keenan will have 330, no touchdown, but Mike had 120 right. on the other side of the field. So I kind of stay away from them because I view them both as wide receiver twos, but if I have to choose between the two, I'm going to take Mike. I feel like you can get Mike at a much better value than Keenan this year. Keenan, I'm seeing inside top 20s, inside top 25s, uh, basically religiously. Mike yeah. Williams, they underrate a little bit. I think Mike Williams, if you can get him as your wide receiver two later on in the draft and he went heavy RB, that might be a better strategy than to try and get a wide receiver one season out of either one of these guys. I don't think you're going to get that. I think they're going to get even work. They both had a thousand yards in, in multiple seasons now mm -hmm. together while on the field together. Right. Yeah. And, and the thing with Mike, uh, Mike Williams too, is that he's kind of, he's a bit, streaky where he was last year where you know he's gonna have a couple of games in a row where he has a bunch of yards and then also a couple of games in a row where kind of what you were alluding to earlier where it's just not that great so a lot of people don't like and i was actually live earlier today and i was talking about this where a lot of people don't like that in fantasy football where they don't they like their guys to be a bit more consistent 
But yeah. The thing with Mike Williams that you get those massive explosion games where he gets, you know, 30 plus points and definitely helps you win your matchup that week. But some weeks, you know, might get you two points. Yeah. Just the nature of the beast. So uh, right now he is going later than um, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, I've seen a lot of the times inside your top 10, right around top 12 in terms mm-hmm. of wide receiver rankings. So that's probably where he's going to go. Mike Ev- or Mike Williams, I keep wanting to say Mike Evans. Uh, Mike <laughs> Williams, like borderline top 20-ish is where uh, I see him ranked a lot. So I yeah, agree with that, you there. Yeah, I just, I like wide receivers that do it both more than the guys that have their own role. Like I, I like the guys that stretch the field and work the underneath. I'd rather have Brendan Cooks. I'd rather uh-huh. have... Uh, Jalen Waddle, even with Tyree Kill there, I'd rather have. I mean, there's a couple of guys that I'd rather have than Mike Williams and Keenan this year, even though Mike and Keenan might be in the better overall offense. Right. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I get you. And uh, you know, Mike, it, at least in best ball right now, which best ball is is a lot different than redraft because best mm-hmm. ball you're just basically uh, playing DFS is what it really is. Mm-hmm. So, but right now he, they're actually going back to back, so it's. Um, Keenan Allen is, I think, going wide receiver 13 and Mike Williams going wide receiver 14. So, and like you said, there's, there's a a couple of guys, especially the wide receiver position, pretty deep. You can get pretty solid guys, you know, pick 20 somewhere. So I agree. If, if there is one that you would go with, you said who Mike Williams, if you had to pick one of the two. If I had to go with one, I pick Mike. Not only is, is his value a little bit better for you can get him at, but also he's labeled publicly by our offensive coaching staff the x receiver as they call him mm-hmm. he's the guy that plays the michael thomas that we have running here in uh our offense right they ran with, with new orleans before but it's just he's he's no offense my boy mike it's michael <laughs> thomas saying those couple of years with drew Brees. uh-huh <laughs> so they which i i, I do like the signing uh this offseason they signed gerald everett um you know as a tight end i was kind of hoping there are some rumors out there that Mike Gesicki wouldn't be re-signed, and I was kind of hoping that the Chargers would get Mike Gesicki because I thought that would be a, a really yeah. good combo there with that offense. But they got Gerald Everett, who I do think is a solid tight end. Um, how do you think he'll do this upcoming season in this offense? I think he's currently going as like tight end 20 range. So, I mean, he's basically free. Um, do you think that he will be a solid asset to this offense this upcoming season? Yeah, I think he'll be a solid, a solid addition. And, and do you think better on, for real life or rather than fantasy? Yeah, I, I think that if you're going to use Joe Everett, it's going to be spotty. It's going to be matchup based. Uh, he's going to have games where he gets a lot of work. He gets a lot of volume if he has the mismatch inside with a linebacker or playing a really strong secondary of some sort. Um, Herbert likes getting the ball to the tight ends. We've seen Donald Parham have success. Donald Parham's not as good as Joe Everett. We've seen Jared Cook last year, kind of on his last string, have some success. Uh, but just not consistent because the wide receivers are so good. Eckler's going to have games where it's just like, we can't stop feeding Eckler. He goes nuts. Um, but to go back on the Mike Gusecki thing, that would have been crazy. Cause that was <laughs> yeah. before, that was before the Mike resigning. So it kind of felt like if Mike goes, then yeah, we could afford to bring in a, a big tight end target, like a Mike Gusecki or if Rob Gronkowski was convinced to come over if Brady stayed in retirement or something like that. But I will say this. Tom Telesco has had multiple perfect seasons in a row, but he has made one mistake in the last couple of years, and that was not re-signing Hunter Henry. And hmm. to Tom Telesco's credit, I also was like, that's too much money for Hunter Henry. Let him walk. But now yeah. looking at our team, imagine the offense if we just had Hunter Henry. And we have some cap room. We have some cap room. We could have kept him on the team. Right. No, that's – you know, you look at it, glass half empty, whatever the saying is, once once it's all said and done, the dust is cleared. But it, it's unfortunate because he would be, man, that offense would be deadly. <laughs> and we had him. He was drafted to the team. Like, we, we could have – all we had to do is resign him. Right. But he did get paid. And, and you know, for fantasy football purposes, you start to look at this where there's just – there's so many mouths to feed. And it's just – not enough targets to go around for all these guys because, like you alluded to earlier, with Austin Eckler, I mean, he's still a stud, still sees a decent target share when it's when you look at running backs in the league. Um, so he can get it done. So it is tough. I do like I, I like Gerald Everett for where he's going. Is he going to probably be a weekly guy that you're going to start? Probably not. But in the off chance that something does happen to one of these guys, uh, say Mike Williams or Keenan Allen gets hurt, I do think that he's a 
more than capable enough receiving target to be somebody that maybe you could rely on on mm-hmm. a weekly basis if something were to happen to these guys. Uh, yeah, maybe, so I, I thought that just, was good signing. Yeah, maybe just keep an eye on the waiver wire for him later on in the year. I, I agree. He, his strength is definitely receiving. He's a receiving type. Absolutely. And they drafted Isaiah Spiller uh, mm-hmm. this offseason, well, in the draft. And he's a very polarizing player in fantasy football because a lot of people didn't like not so much his college production, but the combine. The combine was big because it just was not good in terms of mm-hmm. athleticism when looking at a running back. Do you think that he's going to be the RB2 in this offense ahead of uh, like Larry Roundtree, Joshua Kelly? Like, are those guys still on the team? Did they resign Jackson? No. Uh, no, Jackson kind of is in limbo right now, but Roundtree and Kelly are probably battling for the RB3 spot. I think Spiller is going to be the number two running back. As far as handcuffs go, you want to handcuff him to Eckler because Eckler gets so much work. And it scared me last year in some drafts. I drafted Eckler almost every chance I could get him last year, but I was a little bit worried. I was like, this guy just had a high volume volume year. And now they're like, okay, well, we got to do it again. That was a big part of our offense, even though the team was seven and nine, Justin Herbert's rookie year. Eckler working was a big part of that. So I was worried a little bit about the volume and the injury issues that CMC and those guys run into when they become a receiving and the number one running back. Um, now with Isaiah Spiller there, Isaiah Spiller can take a lot of those tough runs off of Austin Eckler's plate. Only thing that's going to hold back Isaiah Spiller to me is Isaiah Spiller. If Isaiah Spiller has a bad year like Josh Kelly did last year, then Austin Eckler is going to be back into that role again. Um, but definitely a handcuff option. And if anything happens to Eckler, knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't. Spiller's going to come in and, and be the guy they don't they don't really like kelly and roundtree when they're drafting a running back in the third round right and would you say that he's do you think that isaiah spiller might be used a little bit around the uh, red zone or do you think that's just going to strictly be eckler what i want to see spiller's role become for our offense is kind of and i keep pointing back to them because that is our our coordinator that's our scheme and that offense put up crazy numbers and went to the playoffs every year I want him to kind of play that Latavius Murray role. That Latavius Murray played for a little while there with Alvin Kamara and then Mark with Ingram. Alvin Cook a little bit, Mark Ingram. Yeah, with all those guys. So I kind of want Isaiah Spiller to be that. And he kind of has a similar build and play style mm-hmm. to what Murray does. A lot of people draw comparisons to people. I When he was being drafted, I was thinking Isaiah Spiller could be like a Latavius Murray. And Latavius Murray is the perfect change of pace back for right, an offense right. that's high flying like that. Right. No, I agree. I think in, especially in Dynasty, even in redraft, um, I do think he's a guy that you should be handcuffing. Even even if you don't have Austin Eckler, like I still like to in your later rounds rather than going wide receivers, uh, get these you know premium handcuffs, guys mm-hmm. that if something were to happen, obviously like you said, knock on wood, to Austin Eckler that Isaiah Spiller has a chance to step in there and maybe be you know a solid RB two for mm-hmm. your team on a week to week basis, just because this offense is also. It's going to be so good. It should be so yeah. good. So um, I agree with you there, and I think that Jay he Jax. does have potential. Jay Jax in the middle of the year last year, Eckler missed one game. Jay mm-hmm. Jax in the middle of the year. I think it was against Pittsburgh. He had just a random 30-point game. Yeah, no. So, I, I mean, It also could just be like that one game. It just wins you right. one week. And that's, it. And that's all you need sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's you exactly need. exactly what you need. Um, so going back to the wide receivers real quick, Joshua Palmer, do you think that this could be uh, – I believe it was towards the end of last season. He started getting a little bit more involved and had mm-hmm. some pretty solid weeks. Um, do you think this upcoming season, obviously you still have Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, but could we see a little bit more in your opinion from Joshua Palmer this upcoming? Yeah, I think we're going to see a little bit more out of Palmer. Um, again, if Herbert starts spreading the ball out, he, he goes to Palmer. He loves Palmer. Uh, they both have sided in, in practice this season already in, in the post-game interviews and everything the media does that they're working after practice. They're trying to build their chemistry. They're trying to be the best uh, duo they possibly can be in case they're ever called upon to be a Josh Palmer wide receiver one game. And it can happen with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. They're both have dealt with injuries. Keenan less recently, but Mike definitely has dealt with his injuries. So I think that JP five is going to have a few games where if he has to fill in for either one of those guys that he just explodes. I mean, mm-hmm. seven, 80 and, and two touchdowns possibly. He's just an all, he do, all around great wide receiver. And last right. year in camp, when I was going and watching the practices and stuff, he stood out. 
I mean, really? you're not going to believe me, but he was toasting Derwin James multiple really? times in a row. I mean, he was out there balling, and he impressed. And I think that he's going to be the wide receiver three firmly this year. I love Jalen Guyton, but his, his work's going to be in spots this year. Josh Palmer should have 500 yards this year, and I think – that with the team not bringing in any other wide receivers this offseason, that they're planning on kind of giving him a big role in future years and taking that discount of a, a third-round rookie uh, to be the wide receiver two post Keenan Allen. Now we're maybe two years away from that. But just investing in Josh Palmer might be something to do if you're playing Dynasty Fantasy Football right now. Absolutely. And especially because he's probably not that expensive or in Dynasty Football. So, yes. yeah, that's a good uh, – was he drafted last year? Is it last year's draft? Yeah, was he a rookie? last year was his rookie year. Okay. Um, and really, he only flashed in spots where he got more work because we were getting blown out or we were blowing a team out, one of the two. But every time he touched the field, he was doing something. A lot of people remember the Raiders game more than anything because it was the last game of the season. He had right. that big catch to score. I think he had like 60 yards in that game already at that point. Yeah. No, I, I like it. I, I think that he has – like you said, in case anything were to happen, he's kind of like a wide receiver handcuff, as you will, mm -hmm. instead of a running back handcuff, where, once again, this offense is going to be so good. Something happens to one of their wide receivers. He's a guy that could step in and have a, a large role in this offense. All right, so let's switch gears here. We're going to go to would you rather. All right, would you rather okay. draft this player or this player? So since you are, well, we one of these we kind of talked about earlier, but since you're a Chargers fan, I'm going to put you on the spot. So Already Justin right. Herbert or Patrick Mahomes, which one are you Jay drafting? Herb. <laughs> Give me Jay Herb. I'd rather have Jay Herb. I mean, they're both going way too early for me. I draft quarterbacks way later than that. But give me Jay Herb if I got a pick. In two QB league, you might want to think about going Justin Herbert in the first round. Oh, absolutely. I think that he'll be – I would be shocked if – I would be shocked if he's not – a top five quarterback this year. I think he's going to be really solid. So why him over Patrick Mahomes? You think, do you think that Patrick Mahomes is going to come down a little bit without Tyree kill, or do you think he'll be okay? I think Patty will be okay. Stats wise. He's going to put up similar numbers. Uh, maybe he'll be a little bit more careful with the football, but I think that Andy Reed and the offense is going to just incorporate the run a little bit more this year. It won't be as crazy. The Chargers are going to go all in on the past. It'd be quite opposites actually. Mm -hmm. I like it. And then we got we talked about this one earlier, but would you rather go with Mike Williams or Keenan Allen? They're currently going as wide receiver 12, wide receiver 13. So which one would you rather go? I'll take Mike. I'll take Mike. I'd avoid both, like I was saying. Just try and get yourself like Terry McLaurin or, or Brandon Cooks or one of those guys instead. Yeah, and I think Terry McLaurin currently is going like wide receiver uh, 17. So would you yeah. rather go with, let's do this one. Would you rather go with Mike Williams or Michael Pittman? If you had to pick one, Michael Pittman, Michael Pittman, you're a big fan of Michael Pittman this year. I'm a big fan of Michael Pittman in general, but again, mm -hmm. I just think that Michael Pittman does it all for the Colts right now. Unless they sign another receiver at some point, Mike Pittman is their guy to run the slant on third and two and their guy to stretch the field in second and one. I feel like he's both. No, he's a stud. He's, he's yeah. going to be tough. Uh, Gerald Everett, he's currently going as tight end 21 or Tyler Higby. Who's currently going as tight end 20. Would you rather go with Gerald Everett or Tyler Higby? That's so close. I'll go with Everett because Everett's my guy, but that's so <laughs> close. Too. Hopefully neither one of those are my tight end one. <laughs> no, ho <laughs> hopefully not. Not at that range. Hopefully you got one of those guys, but uh, I, I would probably lean the same way just because, like I said, I do think that we've seen Tyler Higby in this offense quite a bit and just this certain, like the uncertainty with Gerald Everett, what the potential could be for him in an offense that likes to throw the football a ton. You know, it's exciting a little bit. Um, all right, and let's let's go into our last segment here where we're going to just talk about TikTok and suggestions you have to anybody who's starting out. What would be your number one tip to anybody that's trying to get themselves out there, uh, wants to t start to maybe take themselves seriously on TikTok? What would your, what would your piece of advice be? Uh, my piece of advice would be, I mean, for one, just, just cannonball in and do your thing immediately. Like just jump on, on there. And start posting as many posts as you want to post a day. Maybe set a goal for yourself to get two, three posts up a day. But the biggest thing is for me and, and what's led to my success, and it's kind of how I live my life too, it's not just uh, on TikTok, is no matter how many times videos flop, no matter how many times I make a mistake, no matter how many times things don't go exactly as I plan them on the platform, or like I said, life in general, I think to having the ability to persevere through something 
is more important when it comes to that kind of stuff than anything else. Because my post that I posted yesterday in a week will no longer be hitting the algorithm. Yeah. I can know everything I want about the algorithm, but my post, even if it goes viral in a week, will be done. And I got to focus on the next thing. I got to persevere and move on to the next thing, whether it was good or bad on the last one. So the biggest thing for me is to just persevere through, push through, no matter what happens on there. That's the biggest thing, because if you consistently just keep putting stuff out, keep putting stuff out, keep putting stuff out, something will stick on there. And that's what that's how I blew up. If you go and look at my old videos, there are some cringy, goofy <laughs> ass videos, bro. But just eventually I figured something out. And now you see how I make my content now. I just kind of followed that path and, and put a little bit more work into editing and stuff. So you can become the best editor. You can know the algorithm. The biggest thing is, is when a video goes for 200 views and you expected it to go for 200,000 views, are you going to make the video the next day? Another video. That's a good point. And, and that's, I'm not going to lie that. There's been a lot of times where I put a lot of time and effort into a video and it flops. And yeah. then it's like, I remember, I'll never forget it. There was a video last year, fantasy football. I thought of it just on the top of my head. I was like, you know, people to cut. And it's literally like a six second of, of guys that I put up on the screen. You know, it was honestly a minute and it goes for a hundred thousand views. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like hours of time I put into other videos. And this one in literally a minute that I think of off the top of my head goes for a hundred thousand views. That's just how it goes. And that's how it TikTok is. And like you said, you got to just every single day, continue to power through no matter what happens, no matter what the views are, just keep doing your thing, put your head down and just grind. That's if you want to grow. If you just want to have fun, then do your own thing and do it whenever you want to do it. But if you're looking to grow, absolutely consistency is key in, in growing up. Yeah. And, and, and trust me and anyone that's tuning in that, you know, have kind of watched me grow if, if they, if they watched or if not, I've had bad days where I've wanted to quit. You know what I mean? I've had bad days. It's just going to the next day is the biggest thing. Um, and I don't get to talk about this very often. No one's ever asked me a, a growth TikTok question or anything like that, bro. If you have a great idea in a video, a little hack to do is, is if it flops the first time, redo the hook, change the opening line to the video and put it back up yeah. in like a week. And no, that thing might go. Because if you have a great idea, it can go. I actually had a series that I basically blew up off of. You might not have seen it. You might have seen it before where I was doing like, pretending like I was a time traveler. And I was either going back in time and creating a whole new timeline in sports. So I'd go back in time and say that, that the Patriots never got Tom Brady. So how would oh, that yeah, impact it? That. The whole thing? Or I'd go in the future and be like, okay, so what's Patrick Mahomes going to do after his football career and come up with like creative stuff? But that video flopped, though that series flopped five times. I repurposed that. Thing. <laughs> oh, really? I was so determined on that idea. And that video, the Patrick Mahomes one was my first video to hit a million views. So oh, geez. if you if you ever have a video that you are very confident that this concept's gonna go and it doesn't go, just try and repurpose it a little bit, present it in a different way, and post it up again. It might go. Absolutely. Do you do all your editing yourself or do you uh, do. have someone do it? Do you? I do, I think I do all my editing. Yeah, I do all my editing. Recently, I've put together like a clips team. So I incorporate mm -hmm. a lot of clips. Those are cool to incorporate in your videos if you can. Um, but I do all the edit editing. So each TikTok, I post three TikToks a day. Each one takes anywhere from 30 to an hour and a half to edit. I think, I think your stuff looks really good right now. I love, I I love your edits, everything that you got going on. So And it's all from my work. phone, believe it or not. Like, Is I don't it really? Do you don't have like yeah. OBS or... Uh, I have OBS. I have Adobe Premiere, okay. but I just have found it more effective for me because, you know, I have a wife. My wife's family is very active. I'm always doing stuff, always fishing, always hanging out at, at baseball games and stuff like that. It's just super convenient to have all my videos recorded on my phone and have the skills to edit it on my phone. So that way I can kind of double book a little bit. I can be like, yeah, I can go fishing today uh -huh. and then hang out and edit a few videos while I'm, while I'm sitting by the lake. <laughs> so when you do the one that I'm, you're like Mount Rushmore one yeah. where you kind of like go through, like you did that on your phone. I did it on my phone. So you, you just got to get a PNG of Mount Rushmore. So just search Mount Rushmore, blank Mount Rushmore PNG, and then some PNG question marks. It's all about layers, bro. I do Photoshop and I did a lot of graphic design, but it's all about layers. So you just got to put the sky in the back, then your green screen video, then the Mount Rushmore blank, the blank Mount Rushmore, then the faces on top. Man. That's yeah. awesome. I didn't know that. That's awesome, dude. 
I'll send you some of the screen recordings where you can see the the timelines also underneath it, and you can see like the four or five layers on there. Yeah, send me that. That'd be. I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to do stuff like that. Like I think. I think the editing is a big part, and a lot. I think it keeps people's interest a lot longer, and that's basically what the algorithm really wants you to do: is just mm -hmm. keep watch time up. So. I think it's really interesting. It keeps people engaged. So yeah, that'd be awesome. It's attention grabbing. Yeah, yeah, the, absolutely. The first guy that I remember seeing doing it was a microphone on YouTube. He does something similar to what TikTok editors do now, but on YouTube. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, man. Is there any, anything else, any final thoughts before we hop off? No, other than uh, the Los Angeles Chargers are winning Super Bowl 57. <laughs> hey, first, let's go. First ring of the first ring of the franchise history. Let's go. Hey, maybe <laughs> AFC is going to be tough, but it will be. It will they have be. a shot. They're, they're, I'll be watching. Be I'll team. be watching the Bills all year, man. More than anybody. The that Bills. Team, yeah, that team's going to be so. Why? Good, just man. because uh, you're interested in how well they do? Yeah, I think they're going to be really good to a point where it's like they might walk. I don't know. We'll see who they run into in the playoffs, but they might walk to the Super Bowl. Like no, they're they, they should they be get, really good. Let's say they get like like. Titans, Bengals, and then they only got to beat one good team in the AFC Championship. Yeah. It's over. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, as I told all the other guests, I hope that you come on again. Um, talk some more football as we get closer to the season. They get in the training camp. More news comes up. So really appreciate you coming on. It means a lot, man. Of course. Thanks for the invite. I love talking to new people, man. It's always fun. It's always fun. I Absolutely. Enjoy. Well, thank you, everybody that's been watching the video. Really appreciate it. Hit that like and subscribe button. It means a lot. It helps grow the channel. Thank you all so very much. Have a great day. Peace out.